These are the objectives for lesson 8.3. So here we have the pH scale. And what the pH scale does is it converts these very, very difficult numbers because of the large number of zeros in them to, to numbers that are more manageable from 1 to 14. And they do that using the mathematical uh, change over using logs. So it's important to realize that these are on a scale of 10. So a 9 will be uh, 10 times different from a 10 which will be a thousand times, nine will be a thousand times different from an 11, and 10,000 different from a 12. Uh, so the concentration of hydrogen ions will be 10,000 times less in a pH 12. Have also a, a general note that uh, animals are normally try and maintain their pH at seven. Fruits are around, uh, are usually acidic. Uh, this is just a special environment in the stomach, uh, in a living thing and cleaners and soaps and so forth are usually uh, quite basic. So this is the mathematical formula that we use. So to convert this hydrogen ion concentration from a whole stack of zeros to just a simple number to deal with, get on your calculator and, and, and take the negative log of it. So the number to base 10, what's the number to base 10? Basically what the log is saying. I find this most useful, just to, this one here is the most useful one. Uh, you've got the pH and you want to know the hydrogen ion concentration. Just plug it into your calculator, 10 to the negative, whatever that pH value is. I am product constant of water now. This is like the equilibrium constant. So because the concentration of water is so large compared to the amount of hydrogen ions and hydroxide ions that dissociate, we actually get rid of this H2O from the bottom. You find as a rule of thumb in chemistry, anything that's over a factor of, of, of three sig figs, anything that's about a thousand out, uh, we can eliminate. So as these as these concentration values are so tiny, we times those two together and we erase this very large value and we get something that we can work with that's called the iron product constant of water. This at 25 degrees Celsius or 298 Kelvin, that's really what we should be doing, gives us this one, this value and so a pH plus a pOH uh, gives us the pK, the pKW uh, which is 14. All right, so we can use that to interchange between pHs and pOHs. An interesting point is because this is breaking up bonds into hydrogen ions and hydroxide ions, the higher the temperature, uh, that's, a, that's an endothermic process, increasing the temperature helps push the equation over to this direction and creates more of this dissociation. So what you have here is when you're increasing the temperature, you're actually causing more of this breakage and so you're actually causing the pH to decrease. What's the interesting thing is that you're also increasing the OH, the pOH concentration. So you still have a neutral solution. So technically it's neutral but the pH is less than 7 because the amount of the concentration of hydroxide uh, hydroxide ions and hydrogen ions is the same. Working through some problems now calculating the pH of 0.2 molar hydrochloric acid. First you write out the equation and this one to make sure it's not it's a, how simple it is if it completely dissociates that's fine. If it's in equilibrium that's a little bit more difficult we need to use pK values. So the hydrogen ion concentration will just be the same because it completely dissociates and so we get a hydrogen ion concentration of 2 by 10 to the minus 2 moles per liter. We then take the negative log of that and that gives us 1.7. Another problem here, calculate the pH of 0.1 molar sodium hydroxide. So similarly we just double check that that is a completely dissociate so we write out the formula for that and there we have the OH so we can get we can do this two ways. We can use the ionic product constant of water, that's 14 and then we can get the hydrogen ion concentration from that and then we can do the negative log of that and that gives us 13. The alternate way is to get the pOH of that, that and then we minus that from 14.